All right, welcome back to the party, party people. Uh, this lecture is going to be covering uh, 3D texture creation um, utilizing Photoshop. Um, if you may have noticed, my mouse is a bit bigger. Uh, something I thought I would try. Uh, Maybe easier to follow what I'm doing um, too if you see like a bigger mouse. So we'll try it and see what happens. Um, so the idea with this assignment is that everything that's done in 3D, hey, everything that's done in 3D like this. Um, needs some sort of image like that in order for this to be looking like a globe, okay? So the simplest object like the sphere um, or more complex objects like this video arcade or a face or teapot, okay? All of these need some sort of texture um, and typically Photoshop is going to be one of those spots where we're going to be creating that kind of texture for things to happen, okay? And then later on I'll show how we can apply that in 3D um, if you decided you were going into 3D, okay? So with this assignment, you're going to get um, some images here, okay? And these are the start off images that we're gonna use. You could add to these, but definitely don't take away what's already there. Um, I'm also gonna drop in this um, font, okay? And on a PC, you can just right click and say install. Right, it's already there. Now on a Mac, you can put it inside your fonts folder and then it'll install it that way, okay? So ideally what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with this one here. So I'm gonna drag in the brick wall. It's thinking. There we go. So we're gonna drag in this brick wall and what this is is just pretty large um, area of bricks. Um, now we may want to have this, let's say, wall, but we want to have some graffiti on it. Uh, we want to tell a little bit of story. We want to use this in 3D, so obviously we want to make this look a bit more 3D. Um, I have some other items here, like here's a bit of graffiti. Here's um, some um, sludge or something on the bottom. Um, here's this tiger picture. Just double click it so we can see it closer. There he is, adorable. Um, so we may want to add that to there as well. And then we have this graffiti font where we can basically type in uh, whatever we want on here, okay? Um, and a lot of these um, I got from this website called textures.com. And you can go through and you register and you get 15 downloads a day or 15 credits a day. And you can search for a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and it's good reference too, so if you needed to uh, let's go to animals here. There you go. You need pictures of animals. You can see they have lots of animals here. Um, in 3D, we use this website exclusively for getting stuff like um, textures of giraffes and gorillas and anything like that. Okay, or metals or plastics or woods or anything. All right. Um, and then we'll go from here. All right. So what I'm going to do is what I need to first do is create um, a bump map. Okay, so if I drop this into my 3D application, um, it's just going to be super flat. And so like in 3D, here's my wall, and it's just a flat gray wall. So what I can do, assign a material to it, and I'll use this, that. Okay. And then here's the color. So instead of having just that flat color there, what I'm going to do... I'm going to add in that brick texture that we have from Photoshop here. All right, so now I applied this brick texture in here. And if I hit six, there we go. Okay, so there's the brick wall. And if we look closely at it, it doesn't appear to have any sort of actual depth to it. It just looks like basically like one of those clings uh, of a brick wall on a wall. That's what it looks like. So what we want to do is in Photoshop, we want to enhance this picture so that it looks like it has some sort of bump or depth to it. Okay. So the way we do that is I have to basically isolate um, the brick from the mortar itself. All right. So uh, we've learned a couple ways that we could isolate things before um, using especially that last assignment, the image manipulation one. So under uh, select color range, I'm going to eye drop on this mortar. And you'll see that that does a pretty good job of selecting 
all the mortary type pieces. And as I crank this up or down, I can isolate that more or less. So I'm going to just kind of pull it up a little bit until I'm getting a majority of this mortar here. And then hit OK. And you'll see we do a, a pretty good job of being able to select that. Um, as I zoom in, you can see in these areas here, it definitely is grabbing the mortar. Um, and some of these spots is grabbing maybe a piece of the brick that's just close to that color. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a huge deal. Um, if I don't like the selection, I can always Control D to deselect it. Go back to my color range. Another way I could select this is maybe zooming in a bit. Um, pulling this fuzziness down some once it wakes up. Okay, so I'm just scooting that down further. And then I can use this plus. Now I can just kind of grab some of these values. Just I'm just clicking and dragging. And what that does, it just says, hey, here's some more values for you to select. Scroll down, grab some more of these values. And then I could again play with the fuzziness. Okay. So a couple different ways you can do it if you're not getting the uh, results that you want. Um, you'll see when I did this, um, it still did grab those other areas. If they bother me, and I'm not even sure that they will because um, it's so kind of small, I can go to my rectangular marquee, hold down Alt, and just deselect those. Okay. There we go. All right, so that'll be good enough for what we're doing for now. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I just drag this down to the new layer button and it duplicates it. Now I have a copy of that. And then I can go to um, this and I'm going to I want to save this selection, okay? Before I do anything else to this thing here, I want to save it. In case I ever need to get back to that, um, I want to be able to do that without screwing things up. So if I go into Select, I can save this selection, okay? And I can give it a name. We'll call it... There we go. Uh, mortar. And then hit OK. So now under my channels, you'll see that I have a new channel and that's called mortar. So very easily I can get, get that selection back just by control clicking right on it. Um, so now what I'm gonna do, um, let's use a layer mask on this. Okay, so if I turn off the one and deselect, you'll see that we get this, which is just the mortar. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to Duplicate this again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this. So if I hit Control I on that, you'll see that it inverts it. So now if I turn these two off, I get just the brick. Okay, so I have one with brick, one with mortar, and one with both brick and mortar. Okay, and if I turn these two on, um, we're at the spot where we have it. Now, zooming in close, you'll, build, you'll still be able to see a little bit of transparency kind of poking through. Um, so it's always good to have this other one on too, just so it kind of fills in some of that. Now we could go to um, like this, let me turn that one off, um, hit Control L, and that'll bring up the levels for this thing. And then I could pull this that way, pull this that way, kind of fill in some of those spots, then go to this one and do the same thing, Control L, go and that does tighten it up some so that we don't have um, those gaps between the two areas because basically what's happening is um, some of these areas are just a little bit too um, too too gray and they're just not mixing right okay so now for a bump map what we want to create is essentially one of these things okay so we want to create one of these like layer mask type things and have it look pretty much like this, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to one of these layer masks, I'm gonna hit Control A, I'm gonna hit Control C, I'm gonna make a brand new layer, and then I'm gonna say do Control V. And you'll see what it does is it pastes that black and white image right there, okay? Now the reason that we separated these 
is so that we can come back and add stuff in here and kind of tweak um, some of the mixing that's going to be happening on there. All right, so we'll adjust that in a bit. We don't really need those right now, but we will in a minute. In a minute. So now I have a black and white image of this. Um, now, if I take this black and white image right into Maya, uh, what will happen is these black areas will really, or the transition areas here where we have black and then white, they'll really kind of like jump out. So what I want to do is just kind of soften it a little bit. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, do a Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to set this down pretty low. So like 0.4 should be good. Okay, and what this does, it gives a little bit of transition between the white and the black, so it doesn't look so crazy out there. All right, so I'm going to save this into my folder. So 3D Texture um, Creation. And this will be called brick underscore bump. Okay, I don't want to save layers. I don't want to save alpha channels. And I do want to save this as an IFF image. Okay, uh, actually let's save it as a TGA, Targa. That's another one. Um, Targa is just more universal if it's very specific to Maya. Um, so if we use Targas, then we should be good for other apps too. So brick bump, save it as a Targa. No alphas, no layers, hit OK. So now I can jump back into Maya and let's see how that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my material. I'm gonna go down to where I can add a bump. Click on this little button, go to my file and then pick that image, okay? Now I just have to move it into my folder, so off the other screen, I'm just copying that same image from one folder into the other. There we go, so now it makes it visible right here. So I hit okay. And now we can see that now it feels like we have um, some bump to it. Now it's a bit drastic and if we look close, it actually looks like the bricks are bumping inward. So I can just go back and set this to a negative number so now the bricks feel like they're bumping out and lower it actually it was supposed to be positive this looked weird at that ring okay so now this feels more like that brick has some bump to it um, especially if i went in and added a light oops let me go over here lights um, Area light. And then what I'm going to do is actually render it out. And the rendering part will make it feel like it's actually a little bit more true to what we're looking at. All right, so there's our brick wall after we rendered it, and you can see it definitely looks more um, realistic than it did here. This looks really flat, and now that we've added that bump to it, it definitely looks a lot, uh, a lot more like a brick wall. So we're heading in the right direction with this. Uh, we just need to keep pushing and seeing what other details we could add. Okay, so uh, inside of our source pack here, uh, we have some graffiti things. Uh, we want to add the graffiti to it. So I'm gonna open this up, so I'm not dragging it to the document, I'm dragging it back here, like above the document. That way it opens it up separately. And what I wanna do is do my prep in here and then bring it in the other file. So um, I need to isolate the black lines because I don't wanna bring the gray in here because that wouldn't make sense to have gray on there. But I want the black lines of this. So I'm gonna to go to uh, boop -ba -da -ba -doo, select color range, clicky button. Um, Maybe I'll use a plus and just kind of grab some of these other values there. Hit OK. All right, so that's pretty good. Hit the layer, oops, hit the select inverse. Then do my layer mask. And now he's all isolated. So now if I grab this and I just duplicate it and send it to the other one. Okay, so just see that again. Click that, click this, duplicate layer. Send it to the other one. Uh, it's okay. There he is. So now we can hit Control T, hold down Alt and Shift, drag him in, and then I can position him. Uh, it's a pretty 
big pattern of brick. So, you know, he's going to be kind of a bit bigger like that. Cool. Hit enter. Uh, let's turn the bump off. I'll turn this on, okay? Just for a second so we can see this. Now, the... Oops. Uh, we have to remove the little white. Come on. There we, go. we have to remove the little white line going around the image. You can kind of see how it has a little outline there. So if you remember from our previous assignments, we can click on this. We can go to uh, Window Properties. And then we can adjust our mask edge. And then using the radius, that'll help clean up that edge. Okay, maybe even taking the ed, uh, contrast up a bit. Nope. Uh, maybe taking the shift edge in a bit. There we go, that's good. Okay, so I brought that in about negative 28. Alright, so there's our graffiti. Alright, so now if we had... Um, if we had this graffiti on here, um, he really wouldn't be bumped out so much, right? So he would he would still be the brick would still bump where the brick bumps and he would just be on it but in certain areas like like this area here my zoom's not working correctly anymore oh, I hit something I don't know what I did uh, just real quick oh, we'll just ignore it for now um, so uh, in the graffiti area in the grout areas in the brick areas, it would be a different look to it, okay? Because it would be kind of like bumped. So just to kind of show if I drop this between these two, you know, we get like that kind of look. Um, but what I can do is have two copies of this. Oops. So one copy is going to be on top, and one copy will be below. And what I can do is, so we see, The top copy. Come on, right there. There we go. Alright. So the top copy, I'm going to Alt click onto there. And you'll see that he only is locked into where the brick is. I'll do the same thing for the bottom one. Alt click between them. And now he's only there. Alright. So now I can go to each one of these and maybe just do. Um, a little bit of opacity on that bottom one. No, opacity is really not cutting it. Okay, and sometimes it's the case you just you know try things and see what happens. Um, so what we're going to do is instead of using the opacity on this, what I can do is come up here to my modes, and using my modes, I can get different kind of blendings that are happening inside there. Okay, so like that, that looks pretty good, the hard light. So I'm going to go up to here to the other one. We'll try hard light on this just to see. All right, it doesn't look too, and it doesn't look too bad, but I think we can do better. I think darker color seems to work good. Okay, so now we can still see the brick kind of through it while seeing this. So it definitely looks like it's more embedded onto the surface of it as opposed to the other way which was you know not really seeing it okay and then just so you can see what the other side looked like let's turn this one back on and I'll scoot him this one over here okay so one kind of looks like it's floating above it this one looks like it's a little more instilled inside the brick wall okay so that's why we kind of separated it the way we did so I'm gonna save this as and I'm going to save it as a Targa. I'm going to save this as brick underscore color. Targa, bricks underscore color. And I don't want to save the alpha channel, so remember to take that off. Yes and yes. Okay. So now I'm going to copy that image. into the spot where I have my other one, okay? So now we go back to Maya. 
I'm gonna go back to my brick wall. There it is. Go back to my color. Go back to this folder. Pick the new one that has the wizard guy on it. And we'll hit the render button and then we wait. All right, so you can see there's our wizard on the wall. He's got a little bump on him uh, on the brick, so it definitely looks like it's kind of bumped out. Uh, we could soften that a little bit more, but we're going to do some more work to the brick, okay? All right, remember this part you don't have to do. I'm just showing you like, why we're doing this, okay? Um, so let's go to some more of our images here, all right? So we still have our font that we can type something with. And then we also have this kind of like grungy texture, okay? So let's drop the grungy texture right inside of our file. There it is. And this is some kind of moss. So this could be growing like on the bottom of where the bricks are at. All right, so I just put it down there. If I need to, I can hit Control T and just kind of resize it a smidge. And then the similar thing that we did with the uh, wizard um, is this moss wouldn't be like perfectly level all over the place, okay? Now this one, we can just try to see if there's a mode maybe we could just add that would make it appear to blend in with the other areas. Okay, now that looks kind of cool. Even though it's not the same thing, this is a neat way to um, add more texture, more detail to something. Maybe it's um, rain. Obviously down here it doesn't work, but just for giggles, if this was up here at the top, this could look like, you know, the, the wall is wet, right? Let's do that. Right, let's go back to this one. All right, so I'm not really seeing anything that's gonna make it look perfect um, the way we'd want it to. So uh, what I'm gonna do is the same technique. We'll drop it in here. As long as I drop it between these two, then it automatically puts it on there, okay? So I need to copy. Um, need to drag this between these two. Alt, click that, there we go. Um, and actually the wizard should be on the bottom and then the other stuff should be on the top. Okay, so now we have these in here. So again, we can go through, there's the behind the scenes stuff. Um, here is it, here it is at normal. Okay, so maybe for this, I could just take the opacity down a touch. And maybe for this, back to normal. No, I think I want something else here. There you go, that's hard light. Yeah, darker color seems to work, look pretty decent. But we're getting some holes in there that I'm not really particularly fond of. All right, so I'm gonna do normal. There we go. And I'm just gonna pull it down a little bit. Maybe to 90%, and then the other one is at... Uh, maybe not 70%. I think 79, okay. So it definitely looks like there's a difference between the two, which is what, that's what we want. Okay, and then let's go and save. We'll save this as a targa. We'll call it brick color, Oops, brick underscore color. Um, and we're just saving over the same name, okay? Every time we do it, we're saving over the same name. And then if I go back into Maya, I copy my images. Load my texture. Hmm. Oh, there it is. I did pop in. Okay. So now we have this on the bottom too. Okay. Now, typically, you don't do all these like one at a time. Um, and then bring it into 3D, you do all the things at once. So that's what we're gonna do on the next one, all right? 
So then my last thing I want to do to this is use that font here to create a uh, texture or a uh, piece of graffiti. So I'm just going to put my name on here, Sarcona. And on the uh, font up here, I should have this somewhere in my list. Okay, so it was called a dripping marker. That's the font that I put there. I can hit, uh, oops, highlight it all, make it bigger. Not too big, cool. Hit Control T. I can rotate it some. Uh, maybe I'll hit T again. Change the color of this. There we go. And then we could also add effects to this. So if I double click on here and I add an effect like uh, stroke, I'll put this on the outside. Let's take the opacity up some. There we go. And that should be good. All right, so now maybe for this one, again, I'm gonna go through to see if there's a way we can kind of blend it in with the bricks. Obviously that doesn't look good. It looks like, you know, the, it looks like the word is glass or something. Okay, most likely we're gonna end up with the same thing, but it's always good to just kind of go through the list of them and see what's going to work. Okay, so far I don't see anything that's exciting me with it. Um, actually, I can't really rotate this too much because the dripping wouldn't go that way. So let's go back to this, control T, rotate it like that. All right, that's cool. Uh, under edit, oops, let me duplicate this first. There we go. I don't want to ruin the original ever. Uh, I'm also going to rasterize the type. So I'll right click on it, rasterize it. And then under edit, transform, I can go to warp. And then I can just kind of distort it a little bit. Give it more of a graffiti type look. There we go, that's cool. And then I wanna give this some de texture too. All right, let me close this, we're done with the wizard. Uh, I wanna give this some texture, so I'm gonna go into my images and that's where I have this metal okay so I'm gonna drop the metal inside of my file kind of line it up with that there we go and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this metal as a way to um, blend my stuff in so I'm gonna go to my select color range on the metal And I'm just trying to pick up something that's going to look like scratches. So as I click and drag across this, I'm trying to find just a nice little pattern, maybe something like that. Okay, now it's flickering. I should ignore the flickering for now. What I'm going to do is go to my text. Uh, I'm going to invert it. And I'm going to put a layer mask on it. Okay, now what happened here is when my text became transparent, I'm getting the stroke on all of these pieces. So if I turn the stroke effect off, you can see it doesn't look as crazy as it does there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is hit undo. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna deselect. I'm gonna rasterize this type effect, so, or the effect. So I right click and say rasterize layer style, and it basically just bakes it in. It just locks it into that exact image. Then I'll go back to my metal select my color range and then on here I will go to oops, actually let me go back to that color range select color range come on click on it let me take the fuzziness like way down there we go All right, that'll work so now I'm going to invert go back to this click on my layer mask and you'll see how we get these like little dots inside here so it looks like it has some grain okay so I'm just gonna undo that and find something that has a bit more texture to it all 
like that. That looks good. Okay, so I'm inverting. I'm turning that off, turning this on, layer masking it. Nope, still not happy with it. Let's just go back. And just keep doing this until we're happy with it. I could also try using the magic wand. Uh, maybe take my... Yeah. I like the control I'm getting with that, so I'm going to go to this. Let's try that. Okay. Now this one I have more of it selected, so I'm not going to invert it this time. There you go. That looks pretty good. That looks very scuffy, like it's been there a while. All right, cool. So now I can just take this and drop it in here, then copy it, drop it into there. And again, this gives us the ability to edit the stuff between the lines and the stuff on the brick itself. So again, there's not gonna be a whole lot of change between the two. But maybe we just want to add a little bit. Okay, so like maybe this is hard light. And then maybe this one is. Yeah, I think that one can probably leave just normal. Okay. Now I think I want to take this and duplicate it also. Okay, now watch what I do here. I'm going to take one up there, make sure these are all connected. Oops. This, this, and this are all connected to the bottom. This, this, and this are all connected to that one. And then on this one, I can take the opacity down or up just to kind of enhance it a bit more. There we go. All right. So now let's um, organize some of our stuff here. So this is gonna be our top brick. So I'll just control G to group that. Okay, so this is our brick group. And then this one will be our mortar. So let's group that. And then this, and this we don't really need, or this, or this. So I'm just gonna group all those together. Let's call it extra. And shove that down to the bottom for now. And then this is our word. There we go. Okay. So now we'll save this as a targa. This only needs to be 24. Hit OK. And then just so we can see what that final product looks like. And the idea between the grout and the brick is that the grout itself would probably absorb paint a little bit differently than the brick would. So it just gives us a little bit more realism um, to that. All right, so there's our graffiti on top of our brick. Uh, my settings are pretty low, that's why it looks so grainy. Uh, let's see if we can just turn those up some and then test it out. So there you can see it's a little bit higher quality uh, rendering. The stuff looks like it's actually on the brick. Um, and even though I'm using this for a 3D Maya app, um, there are other programs you could use uh, like Unreal or 3D Studio Max or Blender or uh, Cinema 4D um, to get the same results. Okay, so very cool. So that's number one. Let's save this. Didn't change anything, I guess. Uh, now let's jump back to Photoshop <clears throat> and we'll save that stuff too. Okay, I'm gonna save this as Sarcona Brick Wall. Need the layers, need the alphas, savey. Okay, so this one actually has a couple parts to it. That's part number one, which is doing the brick wall. Um, part number two 
is going to be using this. Okay, so we're going to be creating a couple more uh, maps using this thing. All right. Now this one we're not going to be jumping back and forth inside of Maya, uh, but we will just be creating the maps pretty straightforward and then going um, on with it. Um, and I will show at the end how we can put all this together. So um, step number one is we just need to isolate the different elements. Um, so just like before we have the um, color, which is what we're seeing here, and then we have the bump, which is what we've developed before. Okay, so you can kind of see where on this we would have the bumped areas like this um, frame going around it. Um, and then the brick over here is kind of bumped too. All right, so let's go and take this kind of one at a time. So the bump map is going to be black and white. And it doesn't really matter what you do as far as what's black and what's white, but it just has to be consistent. So if, um, imagine that, let me just make a new layer here. Imagine that this entire layer is black, and then I do like a white strip right there. Okay, so the black will be no bump, the gray will be a little bump, and then the white will be a lot of bump, okay? Now in the software you saw I could switch it. So I could have the black be the bump, the gray be a little bump and the white be no bump. Okay, so I can switch things. So it doesn't really matter what it is, but just try to think of black and white as a value of zero being no bump to 100 being a value of, or a value of 100 being bump, okay? So as we look at this, um, I'm gonna use black as my like flat area. And then anywhere I wanna bump, I'm gonna pull up the whites, all right? So um, this one I'm going to generate it a little bit different. So I'm going to use my marquee selection. And I'm going to just marquee these windows. Okay. Now if I need to, I can hold down the space bar and nudge it over and then let go. Okay. Zoom out a little bit, I'm a little bit too tight. So I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to drag this to get that to fit. I'm going to hold shift. Drag this, I'm gonna hold shift. Okay, if I need to, I can hold the space bar. It lets me nudge it over, then let go of the space bar, just in case you accidentally selected the wrong thing. Okay, same thing, I'm just holding shift, and dragging this out. Okay, so I'm just doing the same thing for every single one of these windows. All right. Now we have this window and this window, these are pretty much the same thing. So there's no sense in kind of rebuilding every single one of these. Um, oops. So I'm just going to set up this, this one side and then we can just copy over the other side. Let's copy that. And when I said copy, I meant select. Okay. All right, so now I have all of these selected. So I'm going to save that selection in case I need to come back to it. It'll be left side. There it is. Um, I'm gonna make a brand new layer. We'll just fill this with white and then I will make a new layer underneath. Deselect, fill it with black. Oops, deselect, fill it with black, there we go. Okay, so now I have this here. Now, for this transition, if we look at it, it actually looks like it's kind of like angled inward. Well, if I go to this and double click, I can probably do like a bevel emboss. Let's zoom in on it. all my old settings I need to reset this highlight mode is that okay um, outer bevel there you go chisel hard so you can see how I can crank these settings down and, and basically get that same look to it So now I have this looking like I have a bevel on it. And if I turn off the 
that, you can see how that's kind of lining up pretty close to what that is. Okay, but it is backwards. So like the white should be black and then these black areas should be white. So it's, again, it's no big deal. I can always click on any of these and just hit Control I to invert it. Click on this one, Control I to invert it. Okay, so now if we again switch this oops, on and off, you'll see we have that look. Now we are missing some of it here um, so let's go back to this. Let me switch this to just regular. And look at that. See how it, I basically, if I switch this from up to down, I get the other side. Okay, so now I can duplicate this. And one of these will be up. And one will be down. And then I get those four windows. Okay? So it wasn't terribly difficult, just a little bit tricky to get the uh, line up right. So now I'm going to take this whole setup. And I'm going to switch to my move tool, hold alt, and just drag this over to that side. The perspective might be a little bit off. We may need to tweak it. Yep, so I'm just going to hit Control T and just scoot that over there. That should be good there, good there. It's good there. Okay, so that should work. Cool. So I can hide those for a second. Um, we're going to ignore the brick area here. The important part in this one is that uh, we could go through and select the brick and do basically what we did before. Um, same thing with the ground, we could adjust that, but for this we're just going to focus on the glass in this area. Um, there's also a seam coming down the middle here, and there's also this bar. Uh, I'm just going to clone stamp that bar out. Okay, because it's not really necessary for that to be there. Okay, and then a little bit of cloning on this side. Now there is under window, there is a clone source. Where do you go? Right here. And you can do other stuff with it. So let's say I wanted to clone this side, but I wanted it to be over here. So I alt click this, and if I bring it over here, it's actually facing the opposite direction, but I could flip it. So now it's like reversed. So now I'm basically painting like a mirror of the other side. Cool. Yeah, so that works. And that's all clean. Okay. So now I'm going to get this line in here in the middle. So I'm just going to um, just make a little strip right down the middle like that. And I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to paint it black. So now if we look at what this looks like, we have that, okay? Now, that would be good for a bump. So let's save this as a bump. Um, well, we, we want to save it as a bump, but not yet, um, because we have this other stuff going on here. Okay, so this is like extra like distortion stuff. Um, so let's go to our color range. Grab, trying to grab some of this mirror here, or window there. It's not really doing what I was hoping it would do. Um, yeah, we'll deal with that in a different uh, item, okay? We'll leave this as our bump. So we'll save this as uh, window bump targa, no alpha channels, save. Okay, so there's our bump map. So I'm going to take all this stuff here that's part of the bump. I'm going to group it and just call it bump. There we go. Alright, so now I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to modify it. Alright, so 
the next one I'm going to use is a um, reflection map. Okay, so these areas here are transparency maps. Sorry, these areas here are transparent and reflective. Um, so those need to be kind of handled a little bit different. So in all these black areas, I'm just going to control click it, hold down shift, control click it, hold down shift, control click it, hold down shift, control click it. Okay, so I have all of those areas here. Now what I want to do is I'm going to make a new layer above it just so I can kind of separate it. And I want that to be um, reflective, okay? So looking at kind of like what the bump does, um, in the black areas of reflection, there's no reflection happening. And then the white areas of reflection, there is reflection happening, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to deselect these. So I hold down Alt and deselect those with my marquee. I'm gonna fill these um, with white. So I filled that with white. I'm going to invert, fill the rest with black. And so now if we look at this, we have basically black where there's no reflection and white where there is reflection. And the same thing, black where there's no transparency and white where there is transparency, okay? Now, I don't wanna leave it just like that because I actually want to add in some of this detail work that's here, okay? So I'm gonna duplicate this image I'm going to drag it up to the top and turn that back on. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to take this image that's on top of this and I'm going to play with the modes. Now, if I set this to darken, look what it does. It does a pretty sweet job of um, giving us these nice patterns inside here. Then I can take the opacity down and look at that. So now we're going to get this nice pattern of um, where some areas are going to be transparent, some areas are not, some areas are going to be reflective, some areas are not. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate this again. And I'm going to set this up to 100. I'm going to set this to normal. Now in this area here, in this area here, I want that to be fully transparent. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. Go to my color range. There you are. Clicky. All right, so I basically selected those areas. I can go in with my um, ellipse, hold shift, add these other shapes to it. That's good. Hold down alt, deselect these other shapes from there. Yeah, some of those won't be bad to be in there. That's good. Down here doesn't really make sense. Okay, so I only want these. So the rest of this I don't care about. So I'm going to hold down. Um, Shift and Alt. Oops, let me go to my square one. I'm gonna hold down Shift and Alt and marquee a box around these guys. And what it does, it says wherever this box is, just select to keep the stuff selected that's inside there. So it's pretty sweet how it does that. Turn this off, make a new layer. Um, I'm going to fill it with black for reflection because there shouldn't be a reflection there. Make a new layer, fill it with white for transparency because it's 100% transparent, okay? Cool. So now this is my transparency. This is my reflection. This is not needed anymore, gone. Uh, these are not needed anymore. That's gone. Trans reflection. Layer three is nothing. Let's do that. All right, cool. So now let's save this as window transparency. I have the white on. That's the transparency one. No layers. No alpha. Save it as a targa. Yes. Yes. Turn transparency off. No layers. No alpha. As a targa. Window underscore reflection. Cool. Cool. All right. Now, I do have, if you notice, I have a tiger still in here, and we haven't touched that tiger yet, and we really want to um, use him somehow, right? 
So I'm going to drag him into this for my color, which I'll drop under, drop this below. And what I want to do is basically kind of like a graffiti. I want to grab the tiger and put him on here. Okay. So I'm going to use my color range. I'm going to try to find a good selection of the tiger. Okay. So I'm just going through and that might be good right there. Nice balance of it. And then I'm going to throw a layer mask on it. And you'll see what we get is that. So, yeah, maybe I could use that. I'm going to try something different, though. So I'm going to duplicate this so I don't ruin him. Hide one. I'm going to right-click and rasterize it. Then I'm going to hit um, the selection down here and go to Curves. And the way that Curves work is it's kind of like a Levels. Okay? And basically this is our black this is our white so I want to bring the blacks down so anything that's like in the black area I want it to be really black and anything that's in the white area I want it to be really white okay like that okay, so it just adds more contrast into the black areas and the white areas and then I'm going to add a levels to this and I'm just going to crank these up Then I'm going to take this and just kind of flatten all this stuff together. All right. So again, we duplicate it before we do anything destructive. I hit Control E, and that flattens everything into one image. Then I can double click this, and then using this here, look how I can make this transparent. It's neat. Okay. Now, this coloring looks horrible. I'm not going to use that coloring. I'm going to choose a different color. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustment, uh, Hue and Saturation, and then just get rid of the saturation on it. I can even just colorize it right from here instead of adding a new thing. So, like, that looks kind of neat. Now I don't want all of this stuff in here, so I can throw a layer mask on it. Go in with my brush. And just paint black just to get rid of some of this. Okay, so I probably don't want all of this here. Let's make this a bit harder. Control T to shrink it down. There we go, and then I can erase parts of it like that. I can definitely spend more time just kind of tweaking what this is looking like. It definitely adds a little piece of interest to it. You know, someone pipe used a stencil and spray painted this onto the side of this panel here. Pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to save this as my window color. Window color. No alpha. All right, and then we'll save our whole PSD as window, oops, Sarcona, underscore window. All right, so I'm gonna go into Maya, set this up so you can see what it's gonna look like. All right, so here is our final image, um, and this is a bit transparent. You kind of see the object um, through it. Um, nothing really in the scene, so you don't really see you know, anything else, but it's there. Um, cool. So here's how we're going to turn this stuff in. Um, we should have a transparency that looks like that. Close something. A reflection that looks like that. A color that looks like this. A bump that looks like that. 
and then our PSD, which is nicely organized. Now this one was our little tiger thing. Let's call it tiger. Cool. We don't need any of this stuff. We can just toss that. All right, cool. So I'll save that. Close it. All right. So if I go to my folder, because I was working in 3D, I was also kind of copying stuff to this other folder so it would work in 3D. Window color, window reflection, window transparency, window bump, brick color, brick bump. There we go. Just cut those and pop those back into here. Oops. Wants me to close this, so sure, I'll close it. Try that again. There we go. Cool. All right. So now for this assignment, we should have these files. We should have a brick wall with a brick bump and a brick color. We should have a window and then the bump, the color, the reflection, and the transparency for all of those. So then I'm just going to take all of these. I'm going to copy them and then you can drop them into your Dropbox folder okay so wherever your Dropbox folder is you would just put them in that corresponding folder so here's my Dropbox turn in Dropbox Sarcona texture creation and then just paste those right inside there all right and there we go so 3d texture creation done